According to the United Nations, marijuana is the most commonly used drug in the world, with an estimated 200 million users worldwide. Marijuana use increases from year to year. During the pandemic, use has skyrocketed. Many people turn to it for relaxation, recreation, and stress relief, thinking that it is harmless. This trend is seen especially among young people. The truth is that marijuana potency has increased about four times in some parts of the world. But the percentage of adolescents who saw it as harmful fell by 40% worldwide. In the U.S., 43% of college students consume marijuana in 2019, which is the highest number since 1983. There are an estimated 3,700 adolescents who are initiated into use every day. More than half of Americans believe that using marijuana is socially acceptable. Folks have also told me that since many states in the U.S. have legalized it, then it must be okay. The truth is, legalization does not mean that it is harmless. Alcohol has been a legal substance for many years, yet it causes addiction. Chronic drinking is related to many health problems including brain damage and liver disease. After alcohol, marijuana is the most common drug found in drivers involved in car crashes. Often, it is combined with drinking or other drugs. The risk of a serious car accident is up to three times higher for people under the influence of marijuana. In states where marijuana has been legalized, statistics from 2018 show that emergency room visits involving its use, increased by 54%, and hospitalizations increased by 101%. So, what is marijuana? And what does it really do to your mind and body? Marijuana comes from the Indian hemp plant. Marijuana is most commonly smoked. It can also be used in food, beverages, or as a topical. There are over 400 chemicals in marijuana, and the chemical that causes intoxication, or the high, is THC. It is the mind-altering properties of THC that classifies marijuana as a drug. THC is a hallucinogen. It can make people see, hear, or feel things that are not there and lead to psychosis. THC potency has increased over the past 20 years from about 4% to 20%. This means that today's marijuana is a lot more toxic than from previous years. Even more alarming is that THC potency can go as high as 25 to 99% in concentrated forms, such as in marijuana dabs and vaping, that are commonly used by teens. When marijuana is used, it enters into the bloodstream where it is carried to the brain and other organs. In the brain, THC affects areas related to concentration, thinking, pleasure, memory, coordination, and sensory and time perception. Overstimulation of these areas produces the high that people feel. In the short term, it brings the feelings of relaxation and euphoria. However, it also brings impaired memory, disorientation, panic, anxiety, paranoia, motor problems, increased heart rate, and increased risk of stroke. In the long term, marijuana may bring a drop in IQ by 8 to 10 points, loss of motivation, impairment in thinking and learning, respiratory illnesses, lung damage, and addiction. THC can stay in the body for days and weeks after the initial pleasant feelings are gone. Unfortunately for teenagers, Marijuana has brought long-term damage. The teenage brain is not yet fully mature, with neurodevelopment continuing until about the mid-twenties. During adolescence, the brain is particularly sensitive to drugs, and marijuana affects how connections are formed in the brain. One study found that teens who smoke marijuana daily for three years had abnormally shaped hippocampal regions when they reach their early 20s. The hippocampus is the part of the brain responsible for memory. 
it is the highlighted areas in the depiction. Not surprisingly, individuals in this study performed significantly worse in memory tasks than others who did not use. Here are brain scans from SPEC imaging. The brain on the left is a normal, healthy one. The middle brain belongs to a 16-year-old who smoked marijuana daily for two years. The one on the right is that of an 18-year-old who used four times per week for three years. Notice there are a lot more holes in the brain of the users. The holes represent areas of the brain that are not functioning properly. If someone tells you that marijuana is not dangerous, they're not telling you the facts. Marijuana can be addictive. A user may experience intoxication, tolerance, withdrawal, and dependence. In the U.S., about 7 million Americans meet the diagnostic criteria for marijuana use disorder. People with the disorder have trouble stopping, even though it causes many problems in their lives. For a more detailed explanation of how addiction develops in the brain, I invite you to watch the video Truth About Alcohol and Drugs. Most people who start using marijuana think that they can control it such that it will not cause any harm. They also think that they can stick to marijuana only and not go on to harder drugs. The truth is that marijuana is a gateway drug. That means that once a person opens the door to using, they often get on the slippery slope to drug abuse. A study found that youth who use marijuana were 85 times more likely to go on to cocaine than those who did not use. Most heroin users report starting with marijuana and or prescription drugs before moving on to heroin. There are also synthetic or fake marijuana, such as spice or K2, that are sold as cheaper alternatives. Depending on the chemical, it can be 4 to 50 times more potent than marijuana. Spice is the second most commonly abused drug after marijuana for high schoolers, and it can cause psychosis, stroke, seizures, permanent brain damage, and death. Spice has also been found to be laced with fentanyl, the synthetic opioid responsible for more deaths than any other drug. If you are at a decision point of trying marijuana, whether to continue using or resuming after a period of sobriety, I encourage you to stop. Your mind, your body, your schooling, your career, and your life is not worth a temporary high. Hundreds of people told me tragic stories of broken lives as a result of using, including doing things they later regret for the rest of their lives. Don't let that be you. If you need help or support, please ask your physician or pastor to refer you to a mental health counselor. As a Christian, it is my prayer that you will turn to God and not to marijuana or other things for relief and for a true life of contentment. God promises you in Isaiah 45, 22, If you turn to me, you will be saved, for I am God and there is no other.